assalamu alaikum for week 11 we have a topic of cancer which is basically uh, one of the topic of our one very uh, detailed topic that is application of health psychology in for different disorders and diseases and the first one that we'll be discussing would be cancer The learning objectives are what is cancer, what are the cancer risk factors beyond personal control, what are the behavioral risk factors, we will be discussing that how an individual can adjust to a diagnosis of a cancer and what sort of psychological interventions can be used for cancer. Cancer is uh, no more a disease that is unknown, it is usually said to be a silent killer. It's a group of diseases characterized by the presence of new, new plastic cells that grow and spread beyond the control. These cells may be either benign or malignant. Uh, if it is benign, it occurs at one place and uh, it, uh, its treatment may be the surgery. It may be removed and it does not reoccur or does not occur in other parts of the body. However, the malignant uh, one is the one that may reappear even after the surgery or after the treatment, as well as uh, it may appear in different parts of the body. But both parts, uh, types of uh, the neoplastic cells are very much dangerous. Malignant cells are capable of uh, metastasizing and spreading throughout the blood or lymph to other organs of the body and thus making the malignancy is life-threatening. And it also depends that what stage of cancer it is when an individual has to be provided with the treatment. There are different types of treatments for uh, which there are different kinds of uh, interventions as well as it depends on the nature of uh, cancer as well as stage of the cancer that to what extent the psychological um, illnesses or psychological problems may be related with the, those uh, diseases. Cancer is said to be the leading cause of death. Uh, around 23% of the death are because of cancer. During the first nine and a half decades of 20th century, uh, death rates uh, rose threefold, but since the mid 1990s, death rates have begun to decline specifically because of uh, uh, the different treatments that are available, as well as there have been different kind of changes made in the lifespan of the individual for example cancer for the lungs and colon and rectum breast and prostates these are four leading sites for the cancer death but to some extent uh, in west these have decreased currently lung cancer death rates for women are beginning to level off and may soon begin to decline however the breast cancer it is increasing for women day by there are various risk factors for cancer which are beyond personal control and we may classify them in two broad categories. Number one is inherent risk factors and number two is environmental risk factors. Addressing two inherent risk factors, there are um, different uh, sub factors for it. For example, family history, ethnic background, advancing age. Family history is a factor in many types of cancer. Uh, there may be some form of uh, inheritance of a mutated form of a specific gene that uh, may increase um, the possibility of uh, development of cancer. For example, uh, breast cancer and uh, an individual may have a specific mutated gene for that when the, the uh, possibility of having that across the globe is two to three fold. Ethnic background is also a risk factor. Uh, there are certain regions, there are certain uh, localities, there are certain uh, ethnicities in which uh, the mortality from cancer is much more in comparison to the other ethnic group. For example, African Americans uh, have a significantly higher rate of uh, experiencing cancer or dying from it. Advancing age is um, one of the most uh, important and significant mortality risk factor for uh, cancer but it is also uh, not just one factor because we also see that there are youngsters nowadays who are also experiencing different uh, reports or different complaints or different types of cancer uh, 
Uh, the next uh, cluster is regarding the environmental risk factors. Environmental exposure to um, airborne pollutants may be there, or there may be radiations experienced by the individual, uh, or uh, there may be some kind of uh, infectious organism that is present in the environment of the individual and those people are having most possibility to experience um, or develop cancer with specifically those who have heavy exposure and uh, prolonged exposure to such kind of uh, pollutants or radiations. For example, uh, generally it is said that the factories and industries should be um, made in the areas which are non-residential areas because they have uh, um, different kind of uh, things and chemical substances are produced which bring upon different kind of pollutants which are basically not uh, helpful for or you can which are actually hazardous for the health of the people. So there may be a reason of developing some sort of cancer in an individual. Behavioral risk factors for cancer. Uh, there have been a number of risk factors which have been because of uh, the lifestyle choices. So we will be addressing majorly to different lifestyle choices that people have um, developed now or they are having their lifestyles which are actually um, a root cause for developing different forms of cancer. For example, smoking. Uh, cigarettes, shisha and many other forms of smoking are available now like for example people are taking vape as well which is an electronic cigarette. All these um, smoking behaviors increase a risk of development of different forms of cancer specifically lung cancer. Uh, it is also considered to be one of uh, the major uh, causes of deaths from cancer. The relationship between diet and cancer uh, is also present and uh, it depends that if uh, the food that individual is having and it is having a lot of toxins or contaminants for example um, it is said these days that processed food those who intake a lot of processed food they have a possibility of developing cancer in later years of life or uh, it may be at early age as well. A diet high in uh, fruits, vegetables, whole grain or good uh, balanced diet, having dairy products, beans, uh, meat and so on, it may uh, provide a healthy lifestyle to an individual and it may reduce the possibility of experiencing cancer. So uh, it can also be related with the overweight the person what is eating there is a possibility that it is um, making an individual gain weight and obesity is interlinked with development of cancer as well the third factor is alcohol consumption it is a strong uh, predictor of uh, cancer as diet and smoking and many times we just see that there are people who take uh, smoking as well as are indulgent in behavior of alcoholism. So they have far more uh, risk of developing cancer and uh, there is more possibility that the severity level of cancer would be high. Fourth thing is uh, sedentary lifestyle. When people are not uh, taking care of themselves, they are having bad diet, they are not active in life, they are not doing the exercise. Um, many times it's said that breast cancer has strong uh, interlink uh, with the sedentary lifestyle. Exposure to ultraviolet light as well as sexual behaviors may also increase risk for development of various forms of cancer.
Another pretty interesting factor is the psychological risk factors. Uh, there are few researchers who state that it is uh, personality that has some connectivity with development of cancer. However, there have been uh, many other researchers that have found that there is a very weak association between development of cancer and uh, psychosocial factors. Factors that show strongest relationship come from negative emotionality and tendency to repress rather than expressing the emotion, which may uh, lead in the vision for the development of cancer. However, these traits show a stronger relation to a response to a diagnosis of cancer in comparison to the development of cancer. Airing of uh, an announcement of cancer to a client or to significant others or an environment accompanying the person who uh, has cancer it is always very upsetting and psychologically disturbing and adjusting to uh, the diagnosis of cancer is a challenge for uh, the patient himself as well as his or her family and few people have more difficulties uh, a few have uh, not much difficulties it also depends on that whether social support is available to them or not and then also comes up the psycho psychosocial factors like the previous one that we were discussing that those may not be the reason for the development but they do help in adjustment to the diagnosis as well as uh, treatment of uh, cancer if there is a negative effect uh, the individual experiences that more often is uh, pessimistic rather than optimistic so the individual would be finding it difficult to adjust to the diagnosis optimism is strongly related to adjusting well to a diagnosis of cancer however the relationship to long-term outcome is less clear generally people have a lot of um, uh, difficulties in adjusting to the diagnosis because there are financial difficulties then there is a severity of the symptoms then there is accommodation then there is treatment finances uh, and there is pain in the treatment as well so all these things become difficult uh, for a person to handle Expression of both positive and negative emotions can be beneficial if they express that what they are experiencing so that they would not be developing some kind of mental health problems which may be accompanied uh, or which may be comorbid with the illness of cancer. On the contrary, in some situations, expressing negative emotions may um, also do some kind of harm to the individual. When a person uh, keeps on experiencing a lot of anger, uh, it sometimes seems like that it may lead to better adjustment. However, if there is expression of fear and anxiety, it may lead towards um, development of depression or other psychological problem. But however, these can be uh, dealt appropriately if the individual has enough social support. It depends that what type of cancer the individual is experiencing. However, um, no matter what the type of cancer be, uh, adjusting to the diagnosis as well as taking the treatment as well as finding difficulties or the thoughts of departing from the family, these always um, keep an individual engrossed in psychological uh, issues and problems. So the psychological interventions are necessary in order to help client uh, deal with the psychological problems. Psychological intervention for women with breast cancer improve physiological outcome as well. As researchers show that their cortical, uh, cortisol responses and measure of immune functioning indicate that uh, it becomes uh, convenient and helpful for them. Support groups offer another type of support that is beneficial to some cancer patients, especially in allowing the expression of emotion. Then there are people who may be um, at a different level of their illness, uh, who may be having more severe symptoms in comparison to the individual. So they just find that if this person can deal with such kind of situation, I can also do that. So their success stories of uh, their peers in the group, they may also facilitate them and help them deal with the psychological problems. Uh, similarly, there can be uh, CBT that may also be used, cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, 
other than that um, we may help a client as well as family to enhance the social support system and uh, and provide them an opportunity to express their emotions and how to manage their emotions it can also improve the short term emotional adjustment however there is uh, less evidence that psychological intervention prolong the lifespan of the people with the illness however it can just help them out in um, enjoying the time that they are having and experiencing uh, a better way to manage their emotions and to manage their uh, responses while dealing with uh, cancer cancer patient usually benefits from social support from spouse family and healthcare provider so they should always be involved in the therapeutic sessions